Hello and welcome swinging chicks and groovy cats. Here we are at the Jazz Ranch here in the woodshed with the Yamaha upright. We're glad you joined us. And um, you know a lot of people that write to me are beginner level and they want to learn about beginner level chords for jazz and so on. I had a video about that. I want to extend that now with some more information for beginner level jazz students and if you're an intermediate or advanced you might learn something from this that you could pass on to your students so here's my take on it and we're going to talk about some things now that will help you as a beginner level in jazz so here we go now I'm going to start out by saying this video has no script I'm just ad-libbing and it's I'm imagining that you're sitting next to me here at at the piano and I'm just talking to you and you're in my living room so let's just take the keyboard now and just go right into the middle in other words where's the middle like let's sit right in the middle of the keyboard and where are we we're right near middle C in other words we're right in that scale here it is right there there's middle C scale there's the scale of it so in other words it's right in front of us here and it's usually under the lettering Yamaha it's right under the Y here so there's middle C and it's always the note the white note below the two black notes, so it's that one. All right, so then there's two black no there's two black notes here, three there. That's the pattern, and then the rest are white notes. Now we know there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then they begin again, right? So that's C, and that's C up there. So now we go down, and we go by the alphabet. So C, B, A. So we start with A here, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Okay, there we have it. Now that's our scale. Now. We're going to start with C because that's the scale that has no sharps or flats. If we started with A, it would, you know, have more sharps. But we're just going to start with C, which has C major, diatonic scale. Now, we're going to create a formula, right? So we're going to say that that's a half step. Up one is a half. Up another is a half. So these are all half steps. So if we go from every note... One at a time, we're going up half steps. So to go to whole steps, we have to go alternate. You know, so whole step, whole step. Now look, there's no black note in there, so that's a half step, right? The black note is in between. That's a whole. That's a whole. That's a whole. Now look, there's no black note, right? So now that's a half. So let's write a formula for the C scale. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half. So that's two holes, a half three holes and a half. Now you can use that formula for any scale. You can start on any note. Now any note other than C is going to create a different scale obviously so it's going to have sharps. You're going to start to bring in those black notes into the scale. So if we go up to F, we go up a fourth now and we do the same thing, right? Whole step, whole step. Now the half step goes up to B flat so there's our one flat. Whole step, whole step, whole step and then the half step is automatically there right so now but we go into B flat now right whole step whole step there's the half whole step whole step whole step now here's the half gives us an, the B flat so you see here's the basic idea of it C has no sharps or flats in order to go to one flat we can go up a fourth or down a fifth now how do we know it's four just count the four steps right how do we know it's five? Just count down five. One, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Puts us on F. Now F gives us one flat. The key of F is one flat. Now go to two flats, we just go up another fourth again or down a fifth. All right, so up a fourth, B flat. Now let's go down a fifth actually. Now we're going to have we're going to have two flats. So now we have the two black notes, right? These two in there. Same thing. Just continue the process. Start on B flat, go up a fourth now. Right? So how do we know that's a fourth? Well, whole step, whole step, half, right? Whole step, whole step, half. And so on. Now, E flat, A flat. So it's very important to learn those intervals of fourths and fifths within the, within the system of the keyboard. Now you may be asking why I didn't talk about sharp keys. I just talked about the flat keys. Well, the sharp keys would be opposite of the flat keys or contrasting. Just like day contrasts as night and woman contrasts as man or their opposites, so are the sharp keys and the flat keys. In other words, we go up a fourth, 
from the C, we have one flat in the scale. That's F, the scale of F. If we go down a fifth from, from C, we have F, so one flat. So up a fourth, down a fifth. Same thing for sharp keys, but the opposite. In other words, go up a fifth or down a fourth. So flat keys up a fourth, down a fifth. Sharp keys up a fifth, down a fourth. Just the opposite. So that up a fifth puts us into the key of G, which has one sharp, F sharp, right? Or down a fourth, key of G. Down, down another fourth, two, two sharps. And so it goes. So it's perfect. It's amazing. Just reminding you that if I'm going too fast, you can use the wheel button below the video in YouTube to slow down the video to half speed. And you can slow down everything I'm doing to half speed if that's an advantage to you. Anyway, so now the next thing I want to talk about is let's look at those first four notes. Now root, okay, C, D, E, F. Okay, so that's four notes and it goes whole step, whole step, half. Now, that's the first tetrachord of the C scale. It's called a tetrachord because it's a perfect fourth. Interval of a perfect fourth. One, two, three, four. Now, perfect fourth is exactly that. Now, if we go to the next step, and do the same formula, one, two, three, four, we have the same formula of whole step, whole step, half, and that's the second tetrachord within the scale. So every major scale has two tetrachords, a lower one and an upper one, and that creates the scale, and they all have the same relationship to each other, in other words, a perfect fourth. Now, you may say, well, well, there's a step in between. Well, exactly, and that's this note, and that's the tritone. Now, that's that's an interesting concept. The tritone is right in the middle of the scale. If you went like this, and that's an interesting note. It's sort of like yin yang, night and day, and opposites, and so on. But we don't, won't go into that right now. Just accept the fact that that's called the tritone, and we have these two tetra, tetrachords to create the scale. And that happens within every scale, whether it be F, B flat, E flat, A flat. The more difficult scales and the simpler ones, they will always have that relationship. Now. Since we're using this as a basis, now we're going to count and give them numbers. Like this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we see the seven, seven notes to a scale, and then we're back on one again. So there's seven, and we give them numbers. We, so now we can create intervals from those numbers. In other words, one, two. So that's interval of a, of a second, or that's the two. Here's the three, so that's an interval of a third. There's four, so that's an interval of a fourth. Now, we do give them specific names. This is a major second. This is a major third. This is a perfect fourth. This is a perfect fifth. This is a major sixth. This is a major seventh. And there's an octave. Now, just accept that that's what they're called. And then I'll show you how you can alter them, because we need to know every interval within the scale chromatic scale. This is chromatic using every note. This is diatonic using the scale, the natural scale of the diatonic system that we use to create music in modern European, well, all European music from the 1500s on or beyond, before that even. We use the diatonic scale, which is the major scale now. Okay, so chromatic. Now, let's continue. Now, as I said earlier, I'm imagining you sitting next to me on my right side on the bench here, and you're watching me, and you would stop me and say, well, would you repeat that? So if you want it repeated, just hit the back arrow on your keyboard, and it will rewind it. Or you can stop it by hitting the space bar, or you can set the setting to half speed on the settings button so you can review anything that I'm saying over and over again if you need to. So just uh, figure out those those uh, little shortcuts on your keyboard and you and you will uh, be able to benefit more from this. But anyway, we had the two tetrachords. Now we have the scale. One and we give them numbers. 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8. Okay? So now 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna ma name all of them now. Major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, major seventh, octave. Now let's go beyond that. Ninth. So that's an eight, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. That's as much as we do. we don't go into fourteenths. It's just up to thirteen stuff. So these are the upper extensions up here. We call them, those are called upper extensions. Now, so below that, we're going to look at this major second, minor second, right down a half step, minor second, major third down a half step, minor third, right? Perfect fourth, up a half step, augmented fourth, or sharp four. Perfect fifth, down a half step, diminished fifth, okay? Perfect fifth, up a half step, augmented fifth. Major six, down a half step, I, I call that a minor six. Some people call it a diminished six. I like a minor six. Major seven, minor seven. So that's the terminology. Let's review it. Sorry. Major second, minor second. Major third, minor third. Perfect fourth. Augmented fourth or sharp four. Perfect fifth. Diminished fifth or flatted fifth. Augmented fifth or sharp five. Major six or flat six. Major seventh or minor seventh or flat seven. So those are the intervals. That's, that's the build. We start with that and we build chords from those intervals. Next step. Okay, so you can see that I'm using a building process of understanding the steps of the scale, major scale, and then the intervals, and the next thing is going to be, be uh, basic uh, the harmonies of a third or a fourth or any, any kind of harmony you want with two notes. In other words, we started out with just a scale and one note. Now we're going to create two notes, and then three notes create a chord, what we call a chord. So with two, no two notes, we just have an interval. You know, a harmonic interval. In other words, that's a second, that's a major third, this is a minor third, this is a perfect fourth, this is a fifth, and so on. So now, to, let's start by just creating the first chord, which is going to be a major triad. So now, tri means three, so it's going to be three notes. And this is what we start with. Now, all songs are based on triads, and then bigger triads, which become seventh chords. But we want to start with triads, so we're going to just create that major third and add the perfect fifth to it. So there's our first chord, which is C major. Now, of course, this applies to any key you're in. Now, we're just in the, we're doing this from the key of C because it's the easiest one to understand. But if we went up to F, it would be this. One, two, three, four, five. So it'd be one third. And, okay, so we have a, in a triad, major triad, we have a major third and a perfect fifth. That's what you need to know. And you need to understand that. I mean, that is paramount that you understand that. If you don't understand that, then you're just guessing at chords. You need to understand how they're formed, how they feel, how they sound, and the theory behind them. Then you understand it in depth. So one, three, five, one, major third, perfect fifth is the major triad. And that works. Now you may say, well, is that a major triad? No. When we go to there, you know, the intervals have to be the same. In other words, the major third is two, two whole steps. And the perfect fifth is two whole steps, a half step, and then a whole step, if you want to break it down. See, so going from C to D, we have to go there. And we know D major has a F sharp in it. The key of D major has, you know, so, okay. Same with E. You know, so let's just start with that and just look at C for now because that'll keep it simple. So there's a C major chord. Now to go to minor, we're going to lower the third. So that's the rule. Lower the third a half step. That's the minor third. Now, minor third, perfect fifth. Now we have the minor triad. So major triad, minor triad. 
two more triads now. Take the major, go back to the major, and now let's augment the fifth. So there's the augmented triad. Let's go back to the major triad and lower the third and lower the fifth. There's the diminished triad. Now, these four triads are going to be the basis of all the jazz chords we're going to create. We're going to use these as the foundation of our jazz chords. So major triad, minor triad, augmented triad, and diminished triad. And mostly the major, the minor, and the diminished. Now we'll, we're going to move from triads now into seventh chords, which are really jazz chords. So here we go now with jazz chords. Now jazz chords involve adding the seventh to the triads. So now we're just going to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let's um, take the major triad and add the seventh. Now we have a major seventh chord. Now. The way I like to understand that is just, just play the major triad and then add the octave above. Since I had an operation on my finger, it's hard to do that. But anyway, I move that down a half step and then you have the major seventh. So you see that's a major seventh interval linked with a major triad. So that creates the major seventh. There's no other way to see it. Like if you're not understanding that, then it's a... You're not understanding it. So it has to be a major triad with a major seventh interval. Now, this is a minor seventh interval. And when you put that in with a major triad, now you have the dominant seventh. So the, the na name them. Major seventh, dominant seventh. Now, how do they work? Major seventh is usually a chord that we start with or end with. In other words, it's resolved. A dominant seventh is a chord that is moving somewhere. It has tension because it has a tritone in it. Now, a tritone is three whole steps. Like that, or it's an interval of a flat five. How do I know that? Well, there's a perfect fifth, right? Perfect fifth, flat, that's a flat five. That's very unstable. It wants to move somewhere, so it's going to move probably here. Like that. So that instability in that dominant seventh wants to move to F. That C7 wants to move to F. You know, so G7 wants to move to C. So that's the idea of that. So C major seven, C dominant seventh. Now if we lower the third, now if we create a, a minor triad and add the minor seventh interval to it, now we have a minor seventh. So there's the th first three seventh chord you should learn is a major seventh, a dominant seventh, and a minor seventh. How do we do that? One, three, five, major seven. One, three, five, minor seventh, or flat seven. One, flat three, or minor third, five, minor seven, or flat seven. So we have a flat third and a flat seven in the minor seven. It's important to this make the distinction between those three because those are the three most important chords. The major seventh, the dominant seventh, and the minor seventh. If you get all those straight in all your keys, then you've made a really good start. Now we'll continue. Continuing, we have the major seventh, the dominant seventh, and the minor seventh. The next step would be to lower the fifth. Half step. That gives us the half diminished chord, or the C minor 7 flat 5. Now this is a very interesting chord that's usually used a lot in, in minor when we're in a minor key. But anyway, that's the chord and it has a flat 3, a flat 5, or a diminished 5th, and a flat 7 or a minor 7th. And then the last chord of the 7th type varieties is the full diminished. This is a half diminished, so a full diminished just lowers that 7th a half step which is actually a sixth, or I like to think of it more like a double flatted seventh. In other words, seven flatted once, flatted twice, there's a double flatted seventh with a minor third and a flat five. There's our full diminished. So now those are your chords. You know, you can practice them in every key. Major seven, dominant seventh. You can play them like this, minor seventh, 
half diminished or minor seven flat five, and then full diminished. It's, it's a good exercise to just arpeggiate every chord like that. Maybe play it in two octaves like this. Major seven, dominant seven, minor seven, minor seven, flat five, diminished, full diminished seventh. There you have the most essential seventh chords, and then you can move to the key of F or key of G. I usually add uh, one flat and one sharp and then be two, two flats and two sharps, and maybe three flats and three sharps. In other words, move from the easiest keys to the more difficult in steps. So you take that and put it into another key, you're going to be in F, major seven, right? Dominant seventh, minor seventh, minor seven flat five, diminished seventh. So you want to practice these in every key, but I would advise doing this in steps. In other words, whatever key you're playing a song in, try to understand those f five types of seventh chords in whatever key you're playing in. If you're playing in C, understand them in that key. If you're playing in something in the key of F, work them out in that key, and so on and so on. So like you're going to put them into the left hand to make them practical for melodies, right? Major seventh, dominant seventh, minor seventh, minor seven flat five, and then diminished. So the scales. Now we'll talk about the scales, but I want to be sure that you understand the chords and understand them in every key and then be able to apply them to tunes and use them in your left hand in block positions and then inversions too. So we'll move to that for the next step. Okay, those are the basic seventh chords you want to learn. Major seventh, dominant seventh, minor seventh, half diminished and full diminished seventh. Now. There's a few other chords you want to learn. Now, ma basically, the major triad with an added sixth. So that's the major sixth. The minor triad with an added sixth, the minor sixth. And then also what we call the sus four. Now, sus just means sus suspended. It's suspended over the, in uh, terminology, it was suspended over the bar. So what happened was the fourth, the third is raised to the fourth, and then it resolves to the third. So over the bar, it's like kind of like the amen, but you can play it as a triad, or you can play it as a seventh chord like this, or you can play it as a ninth like this. So, or it could be this. See, there's the ninth in there. That's the nine if you're looking at that as the root. Eight, nine, flat seven, eleven, or fourteen, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven is the same as four, so that's a commonly used chord in modern modern music. Even uh, contemporary music, uh, classical and, and, and rock, and Latin. Bert Bacharach. Okay, so now we have those varieties of seventh chords, major, dominant, minor, half diminished, full diminished. Now we have the six, major six, the minor six, and the sus four. And if you want to add to that, you could uh, add a uh, basic triad with the two, like a two chord, two in there, like that. That's pretty much it for most important chords you need to learn. Now you put them in the left hand and start to create melodies over those chords. Now that I've talked about the various types of chords you need to learn, 
the triads, and the seventh chords. Now we need to le learn how to apply them to a song. And that involves what I call the scale tone triads and the scale tone sevenths. That means taking the scale of whatever key you're in, if it's F or G or C, here it is for C, and we're going to play the triads building that scale with these triads like this. The one chord, the two chord, the three chord, the four chord, the five chord, the six chord, the seven chord, and one. So it's C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, and there's the odd one, the B diminished, and the C. So now to make them sevenths, we just add the sevenths, so now we have C major seven, D minor seven, E minor seven, F major seven, G dominant seventh, the only dominant seventh in the, in the system, A minor seven, B half diminished, and then C. So now these are the chords we're going to use like one, four, three, six, two, five, one to create a melody. You know, put a melody to it. We're going to go. Like that. So that's the next step. That's the next thing we're going to talk about in the next video is how to use these chords to create songs and to accompany the melody of a song. In other words, to give you the harmonic support of a song. I just want to wrap up by showing you how I would use those chords in a song. Like, we'll take Green Dolphin Street, C major seventh, right? C minor seventh, then D seven, Major seventh, now A seventh. I'm going to use it there. D minor seventh, G seventh, C major seventh. I'm keeping it simple now. F minor seventh, B flat seven, E flat major seventh. Now. I'm inverting some of the chords and that's what you want to learn in the next step. But the important thing is that you learn all these chords in every key in their root position and then begin to invert them. So C major 7, every 7th chord has three inversions. So <laughs> you have a lot of work cut out for you and I will, I will stop there. But just learn the chords in their root position to start. So now we will wrap things up. Wrapping up, I just want to say thanks so much for joining me here at the Jazz Ranch here in the woodshed with the Yamaha Bright. And, you know, I love doing these videos because music is so awesome and uh, so surprising and so incredible. So until next time, I'll say swing loose and we'll see you around the block.